there's a few stories I want to get to. The uh, the last two are, are kind of linked, um, but the first one is a report. Um, an article in the Independent showed a report by the CPAG, uh, the Child Poverty Action Group, and they put out something that we've known for a while. But there's a difference between knowing something and someone actually sitting down saying, look, here is all the evidence. This is a fact. You can no longer argue the opposite because here is everything. It is the grim truth. And that grim truth is minimum wage just isn't enough. It's not. It's It hasn't been enough for a while. But the, the finding that CPAG uh, have found is that families, a two-parent income, two-parent household, both on minimum wage, still leaves families £49 a week short of being able to provide a basic lifestyle. So that's before you get into uh, holidays, that's before you get into Christmas presents and birthday presents and uh, extravagant days out. Just providing the absolute basics of life almost 50 pounds short a week and these aren't lazy families these are families in work two parents both working are not able to provide a basic lifestyle it is appalling when the minimum wage was first introduced it was introduced at a rate based on a single parent having to work basic hours would still be able to provide for their family and be able to buy a home. You cannot buy a home on basic wage now. It just doesn't happen. And this is the report that shows it. We have a government that have plunged children into poverty with an artificial austerity while they are telling people that this is something that needs to happen. That it's right that children go to food banks. It's absolutely obscene. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. When it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to children having to go to food banks, it's something that we've seen them pop up a little more each time. And um, this kind of leads into my next story. Again, from the Independent, uh, it's. It's slightly older. This article was on the 9th of August. So it's 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 um I'm a little bit late with this one, but the Home Office tells destitute Windrush woman to seek charity help to seek charity help to feed her child. That's just the headline. When you actually go through the article, it's devastating. And I'll leave links down below for these articles a former nurse who is facing deportation has been told to seek charity help in order to feed her child while she waits for wind for the wind rush task force to look into her case how devastating is it how can anyone claim any sort of pride with the British government when this is what we have. I keep saying these words because it's true and people just don't seem to want to accept it, including a couple of friends of mine. The Windrush scandal is something that never needed to happen. We have immigrants who were legal, who under Theresa May's watch, Theresa May was Home Secretary, it was her office that was responsible for this, became illegal immigrants because the documents were lost well we know now we now know that those documents were actually destroyed did Theresa May face any backlash for this no she didn't did Amber Rudd well she lost her job as home secretary but she's still an MP still a fairly predominant cabinet member and still on 77,000 pounds a year plus with all the expenses, with something like, I believe it's a £70 allowance uh, for food a day. That's just for lunch. £70. 
That's how much they're allowed for lunch on the taxpayer. I'm sorry, but if you're spending £70 on lunch, you can pay for it yourself. But this story just gets worse because uh, the lady in question, Sharon Vitalis, really hope I'm pronouncing that right, an NHS hero. In my opinion, if you work in the NHS, given how terrible the wages are, how overworked everyone is, you are a hero. And she's not left the NHS. She has been forced out of her job, again, because of Theresa May. She's now in a position where she cannot feed her child because she can't even sign on, because Theresa May has made her an illegal immigrant. And this is something that uh, goes into the, the last story I want to get to. And that is... The cabinet have now come out with saying that EU migrants, regardless of if we get a deal from Brexit or if we don't get a deal from Brexit, we're not going to kick anyone out of the country. After Windrush, absolutely no one can take your word for anything. I mean, first off, the, the whole Brexit means Brexit soundbite is unbelievably stupid. Because there's four or five different types of Brexit that are out there. But Brexit means Brexit. Well, that means we cut off all communications, all, all ties with the EU completely. So Dover will be screwed because that means uh, everything going to Calais has to be stopped and checked. That will gridlock my hometown. I've already seen it on days where they have to check just a few vehicles at a time. This town gets gridlocked. And it won't just be this town, it will spread on and over and over. We have one of the busiest ports in the country. And that's before you take into account Ireland. Because the border of North and South Ireland goes through people's kitchens. If we're going to have Brexit means Brexit, well that means there is now a border that people have to be checked at between North and South Ireland. But you know people don't like to think about that because it's one of the difficult things. Horticulture, agriculture, factories, social care. All these industries will crumble if we evict EU migrants because of a no-deal Brexit. And it's something that Sajid Davis has said before, that if, you, if you're uh, from anywhere else in Europe and you've come here, and you've been here for five years, then you don't have to worry about a thing. But you do. Because this is not a government that can be trusted. Theresa May, Sajid Davis, Amber Rudd, Matt Hancock, Jeremy Hunt. These are all snakes. These are all people who have lied through their teeth. These are people who align themselves with white supremacists. These are people who act not on what is the best for the country, but what is best for their own personal bank account if brexit goes horribly wrong and unfortunately that seems like a very very likely possibility it's not Theresa may or jeremy hunt or boris johnson who's going to face that it's going to be us they keep making promises and yet their history shows that they do not keep to their word. So how can we trust them? Other countries have already put this forward, and I'm sorry, but burying your head in the sand isn't going to accomplish anything. Other countries don't know how to act. They don't know what they're going to do with English nationals who live in their territories because they don't have a clue what we're doing. Because we don't have a clue what we're doing. Because we have somehow elected a government that is more interested in making their own bank accounts flourish than actually serving the people. Windrush didn't need to happen, it was forced. And that is the scariest thing of all. The fact that Theresa May has made hundreds upon hundreds of legal 
legal immigrants overnight illegal out of work unable to sign on whether they have children or not and Sajid Davis's response I'll put you on the fast track if you shut the hell up and never say a thing about this that's the government we have how fucking terrifying